Hi, I'm Alistair and I make escape room games. And today is December the 1st, the start of Advent. So I thought it might be quite fun if I made a little Advent calendar to share with you. So starting today and hopefully every day for the next 24 days, I'm going to upload a little video tutorial that shows a piece of hardware or a particular sensor or maybe a snippet of Arduino code which I found useful and hopefully you'll be able to use to create an escape room puzzle. So starting today I'd like to show you uh, this. This is a PAJ7620 gesture recogniser and I've got it plugged into an Arduino here. It has an I2C connection and if I just turn on the serial monitor output from that uh, Arduino, rather than a proximity sensor that just detects whether my hand is close to it, a gesture recogniser will actually recognise a uh, series of simple gestures in front of it. So I can move my hand forwards or backwards from the sensor, or up or down in front of it, or left or right, and these can be translated into um, different actions. Here I've just got them displaying values on the serial monitor, but you could trigger different actions based on this. Uh, so here's the wiring. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm using an Uno here, but this will work with a Nano or a Mega or most other sorts of microprocessor that have an I2C connection. So we've got the clock and the data line. They're the blue and the green wires here. They need to go to A4 and A5. Um, these are analog in pins on an Arduino, but they do double up as the uh, I2C connectors as well. And we've got the ground line connected to ground. And then note that I'm using the 3.3 volt output from the Arduino to go to VCC, not the 5 volt connector. So the uh, chip runs at 3.3 volts. There are two uh, linear regulators on the board, this little bit here and here, uh, which I believe will drop down a 5 volt supply to 3.3 if you connected it to 5 volt but really there's no point doing that um, the first thing that you'll have to do is dissipate that extra voltage that you're sending in that's not required so um, you may as well connect it to 3.3 in the first place which is actually closer to the voltage it really wants um, and that's it and here's the Arduino code itself um, so at the top I'm just including the Arduino wire library, um, that's what you need to include for any sensor that you're communicating with over the I2C interface. And then this is the specific library which I'm using for uh, the PAJ module itself. Uh, it's based on the data sheet of functions which you can get uh, from this link up here. Um, it's actually based on an existing library I found and it's been modified slightly so I've saved my own local copy of it so you can find that in the source folder there. Uh, and then in the setup function we simply initialize the serial connection so that we can actually see the output on the serial monitor window um, and then what we do is we initialize the sensor itself so that's what this function does. This will um, if this is successful, it returns just the value zero to show that no errors were encountered. Uh, if there was an error encountered, then we'll get the result back and we'll store it in this error variable. And then if that has got anything in it, we'll simply print what the error was. So uh, if the sensor couldn't be detected or couldn't be initialized for whatever reason, we'll get that printed onto the serial monitor. Uh, if it did initialize successfully, uh, then we'll just put a message up to say we're ready to go. And that's it for setup. So basically all, all of the setup itself is actually done in this function which is contained in the library up there. And then in the main program loop that just goes over and over, uh, what we'll do is we'll create a variable that's going to record the gesture that was last recognized. And again, we'll also just record an error just in case one happens. And then we'll use this function here. So uh, this function is part of that library included at the top and it reads a particular register value from the sensor. It actually reads um, this value here and that value uh, stores whatever the last gesture recognised by the sensor was. So the sensor is basically doing all the hard work here. It's, it's got its own integrated chip that does all the readings. It says was this a forwards or backwards or left movement whatever and it stores the last thing it recognised in this uh, register here. So what we'll do is we'll read that register value. It's a single byte of data, so we just have one, and we'll store the result in this gesture which we declared at the top. So we've now got our own local gesture value, and we've also got an 
error. So just like in the initialization, if this was successful, uh, the error will be zero because no errors were encountered. And if there were any problems, it will put a, uh, an error code in there instead. But assuming that was successful, so assuming that there isn't any error, then what we'll do here is we'll do a switch statement based on whatever the value of gesture was. So a switch statement is a bit like a series of uh, if statements, one after another, but only one of them will ever be true. So we'll, we'll do a switch based on whatever gesture is, and we'll compare it to uh, a number of predefined gestures which the library already knows about. So right, left, up, down, and forwards, and backwards. And in each of these cases, what we'll do is we'll simply write to the serial monitor whatever the gesture that was recognized was. If you wanted to, you could obviously add some more code here to do whatever when a right gesture is recognized. So let's say you want to turn a light on or uh, make the volume of a, an audio player go up or something when you swiped right. That's where you'd put that code there. And left, maybe you'd make uh, the light go off or you know make it quieter again. That's where the insert code here. Now, uh, the gesture recognizer does actually include a couple of extra flags as well. So it has uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise, and it also has this uh, wave, but I found them not to be hugely um, well recognized, to be honest. Uh, even the forwards and backwards can be slightly difficult to recognize, because if you don't keep your hand perfectly um, level it can be falsely detected as a left or right or up down instead. These ones are uh, really good. So if you only want to use up down left right that's probably what I'd recommend in terms of getting the most reliable readings. Um, you can add these for extra functionality and you can add these for even more functionality if you want but with every potential flag that you look for you kind of have the risk of a false positive uh, being detected that's all I'd say. Um, if none of those, uh, so rather if, if uh, the error variable did have a value in it, then we'll dump out the error. And finally, we'll just put a delay in before checking again. And that's it.